sing mighty mighty is the one who's for us mighty is the one who's strong to save he will make a way you will make a way for your love endures forever oh your love endures forever open up our eyes surround us with your light your love endures forever our god is fighting for us always our god is fighting for us all our god is fighting for us always we are not alone we are not alone our god is fighting for us always our god is fighting for us all our god is fighting for us always we are not alone we are not alone for we are not alone we are not alone for your love endures forever oh your love endures forever open up our eyes surround us with your light your love endures forever our god our god is fighting for us always our god is fighting for us all our god is fighting for us always we are not alone, we are not alone, for we are not alone, we are not alone, we are not alone, we are not alone. Hey, if you are a guest here with us today, thank you so much for being here with us. If you do us a favor, and in your bulletins, there's a little fill-out section that tears out. If you could fill that out for us so we can get to know you a little better and contact you to say, hey, thanks for being here. We'd love to have you here. Secondly, if you see anybody that may not look as familiar to you or someone that you haven't said hi to for a while, go and say hi to them real quick.
All right. Thank you so much for, whoops. Hold on just a second. All right, so as you're finding your way back to your seat, I wanted to do a little presentation for our Bible quizzers. These five kiddos participated in the regional quiz meet, which was not last weekend, but the weekend before. But I wanted to make sure everybody was here for this presentation because I'm kind of incredibly amazed with these five kiddos right here. They are, um, for a red level, we had Maggie and Isaac that participated, and they were the top five representing Northeast Indiana. And stand up, they can't see you. And then for the blue level, Kale Emerson and Marley um, were part of the top five that um, represented NEI. So, so that was two weeks ago, and it was a lot of fun. There was some uh, rock wall climbing. It was really fun, and then he's sitting over here yawning. Like, I promise it was fun. So, but anyway, I wanted to kind of brag on these kiddos real quick. So Isaac and Maggie were in the um, red level, and Isaac, tell us, how many, how many did you miss in each round? I missed zero. Zero. So, so, so Isaac made it into the top ten. He missed zero in three rounds, so that was pretty good. Um, and I know Kale and Emerson also made it into the top ten. Emerson missed one question, and Kale missed zero questions. So, <laughs> so congratulations to them. Um, also, um, when we have our Bible quizzers, children's Bible quizzing is from age first grade. So, Nelson, I'm going to have you go ahead and start. Um, so we start in first grade, and then they move, they can quiz all the way through to sixth grade. Aww. Um, so anyway, um, so this would be the sixth grade year for Kale and Emerson, so they are aging out of children's Bible quizzing. So we always like to do a little um, photo, whatever, of all of the years they have um, quizzed since first grade every single year. So we just would like to present them. Miss Bonnie, I made her come up here even. She does so much work for our kids, and we never give her the recognition. So we should clap for her. <laughs> But we, ha we do have a parting gift for Kale and Emerson, and we thank you for your time in our children's quizzing. All right, thank you. As they're making their way up here, I just want to say Happy Father's Day to all you fathers. And um, we have a, a few little special things today. I don't know if you've noticed, but we have done a photo booth out in the foyer. And we would love for you to get your photo with your dad or your family. And there is a tub that has props in it. And feel free to use those. And um, it's out in the foyer, and we really hope you use it and just have a lot of fun with it. And then we'll also have a gift for all the fathers. Um, today we have something a little special. I have asked um, some of the children and the youth in our church if they would be willing to say something about their father that they are very thankful for. The first one is Kate. Um, I'm probably thankful for my dad's sense of humor. Um, it kind of balances out my mom's sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm also thankful for my dad's trust in me. I feel like whenever there's a dark time with me, I feel like my dad always brings light, and I'm really thankful for that. And I don't know what else I could ask for in a dad. Hi. Um, I have my siblings, three things as, long, as well as mine. Um, he is trustworthy. He's honest. He got me my first Choco Taco. He, he is nice, thoughtful, plays sports in the backyard, and he's encouraging, trustworthy, and patient. 
my dad. Plays tickle and wrestle with me. My, he loves me. And he plays. Plays video games. <laughs> the three things that I love about my dad are he lets me, he helps me with my math, and he plays with me. Um, I have a few things I'm grateful for for my dad. Um, first is that he cheers me up when I am down. He helps me when I am hurt. He works as hard as to get as much money as he can to help feed uh, me and my family and give us shelter. I'm thankful for my dad that he works hard for us every day and that he's always there for us and that he's really funny. I love my dad because he loves me and he plays with me. And then there was one more, um, Maggie Mettler, um, she didn't want to come up stage, and that's perfectly fine, but she wrote hers out, and it says, I am thankful that my dad reads my devotion book with me. I'm thankful for Daddy because he is kind. And um, thank you so very much for sharing. And um, I kind of was trying to think about the Bible verse, and then when I saw the bulletin, it just really struck out, and it says in Proverbs 20, verse 7, the righteous man leads a blameless life. Blessed are his children after him. And that just, I think, spoke volumes when the children said what they had to say about their dad. Thank you for being godly fathers and for teaching them and leading them in the right direction. And um, we are totally blessed by each of you godly fathers. So thank you so much. And don't forget to get your gift and enjoy the photo booth today. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout out loud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. So come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. And I invite you to stay with us, and if you want to sit down at any time as part of your worship, you can do that. Just feel free to worship however you desire with us. <coughs> There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing His Word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. It tells, it tells me of a Savior's love. Who died to set me free? It tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect feet. And oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Because He first loved me. It tells me what my Father has in store for every day. And though I tread a darkened path, His love will shine all the way. And oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how 
blood of Jesus, because He first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. And oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh. How I love Jesus because He first loved me, and oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus because He first loved me. stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father.
time of prayer. Man, we have so much to be grateful for. And so I invite you to come down to the altars and pray. And it's it's not just if you have problems. If you have anything on your mind and heart that you want to just share with God um, in, a, in a more intimate fashion um, and these are symbolic to say that you're just coming to the feet of Jesus and expressing your heart to him so if I should do that now you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. 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 You're a good, good father. It's who you are. 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 And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. heaven right now and focus on the father this is father's day he's the ultimate father let's just kind of wish him and thank him for being the father that he is in our own gentle way Lord, we celebrate you today. 
You're not just a good, good father. You are a great, great, great father. And I thank you that you're in our presence this morning. You say where two or three are gathered in your name, that, Lord, you'll be there. And, Lord, that's where we're at. We have more than two or three. And so this morning, we just want to wish you a happy Father's Day. And thank you for all the wonderful blessings that you give to us each day. Not only do you provide food and shelter and provide us with jobs and provide us with finances we need and not only do you provide us with that but Lord you gave each one of, you gave each one of us the, the great plan of your salvation that you want to live in our hearts that's how important we are to you Lord and I thank you for your spirit I thank you for your son who died on the cross that we might have victory over sin I thank you for the empowerment of your Holy Spirit that lives within us as we allow ourselves to be surrendered to you and move in the direction that you want us to move thank you Thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that you've given us children and grandchildren. I, I thank you that, Lord Jesus, that you've given us friendships that we can come to and celebrate and worship you, where it's all about one another, where we are instructing one another and loving on one another and encouraging one another and spurring one another and on and sharing each other's burdens and praying for one another, Lord. We thank you for those opportunities that you give us, Lord. Thank you we can approach the throne of grace, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You want to spend time with each one of us. Thank you. But Lord, we have some brothers and sisters who are kind of going through some hard times. I think of the Pells family. I don't know what's, what you're doing hanging on with Ray. But Lord, he, he's not really responding much. Got to talk to him for just a few moments this past week. But I know that, Lord, the girls, his children are hurting. I pray that, Lord, in that family that because of Ray his children might come to know you. So I contacted Donna even this morning, told her I was praying for her. She just said, pray for the kids, that they come to know you. I pray you give Donna strength. You may Ray not have to suffer. I lift up the Hershey family. I pray that you be with Kathy with the loss of her mom. That as they grieve, Lord, they can rest assured that you'll be with them and your presence will give them peace that they need during this difficult time. Encourage your heart, Lord, one way or another. Pray for Ray Barger, Lord, as he goes in for tests this week. Lord, those tests would come back where uh, maybe the cancer would be completely gone, but if not, give the doctors wisdom, your divine wisdom, Lord, to know how to deal with what he's dealing with, Lord. That, Lord, you would help to remove the cancer that's within. Think of Peggy this morning and ask that you do the same. That, Lord, you would remove the cancer from her body. Thank you for Steve... Redelman is here today, Lord Jesus. Again, he's got a leg that's a couple of legs that aren't working quite right. Lord, we know you're a divine healer. We do ask for that, and you say to ask, but we don't want to be outside your will. There may be something you're trying to teach him. Lord, nothing else to teach him to be obedient and trust you in all matters. We thank you for him this morning. We think of Sharon Moriarty, Lord Jesus, that had surgery this week and on her back, and she's going to be out of commission for a few weeks. And ask that, Lord, you'd be with her and Howard. I know she's been concerned about Howard. Um, just continue to 
to give them the help they need and bring people along their side to give them the help that they need. Bring healing to her back, Lord. Continue to be with Blake, Lord. You know he's got another procedure coming up in June. I think it's 26th. I pray that, Lord, you would touch uh, him. And as they go through, that, Lord, they would just not walk through the journey, but they would walk through it with eyes wide open that we're maybe... Lord, you'll be able to use them to share the beautiful message of you to somebody that does not know you. I pray for our Illuminate ministry, Lord. What an incredible week we had out there, Lord. We had an additional adults come out. And Lord, one of them, uh, someone who's come off and on for the last four years, and she asked if she could be a help and work there. And so, Lord, I ask that you help us to, to bring her aboard and get her working and functioning, Lord, that she can take some ownership in in the ministry that's there. I thank you for those that were there, like uh, one individual who was sharing with me, I'm going to leave the name nameless, Lord, you know who it was, that that was just blown by the, the Bible studies they've been having on Wednesday nights, Lord. We thank you for the way that her eyes are being opened up little by little to your amazing love and grace. And ask that you would continue to do that, not just with her, but other ladies who have been coming. I pray for our children that, Lord, when they grow up, they will know you and that you'll be a solid rock for them. For some of them, they call the Illuminate their church. May they sense the love and the peace that you can give there. But also may they sense that there's more than that. That there is the salvation plan of redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Be with the other ministries that are taking place within our church. We thank you so much that, Lord, you've given us so many opportunities. Lord, continue to be with our fathers. And may you put a hedge of protection around our families. We know the world's trying to grab hold of each one trying to pull them in the direction of the world the evil of the world and may they know today that Lord Jesus there is a better plan than what the world has to offer it's in your son Jesus Christ thank you thank you this morning for those who have asked you into their lives and are living it out may you help them to live it out to the fullest and they will find your joy in everything. Now, Lord, I close by asking that you be with these that have come to the altar, whether they're praising you or leaving their their prayer concerns at the altar. Just help them, Lord, in whatever path they take. And again, Lord, we just say have full reign of the rest of the service. And all God's people said. Well, we want to give you an update of where we're at on the offering that's been given for Blake Zint, and he's going to be starting that process here within about a week and a half. Isn't that right, Blake? So uh, we would like to reach our goal. We're very close. Uh, go ahead if you pop that up there, Nelson, and uh, you can see um, just under, I was never good at math, but um, I think, what, $600, $600? So we would love to help them and complete this goal and just take one one more stress out of their life here as they're getting ready to kind of uh, embrace that. They have been so appreciative as well. And um, so if you get a chance, just go love on them, give them a big hug, and uh, let them know that we, we love them. You can throw um, your tithe uh, envelope or the envelope in front of you into the offering plate. Just put Blake Zent on that, and we'll get that where it needs to go. So as the ushers are coming forward and uh, moving this direction, I also want to keep you aware of services here for the next week. Um, There is no evening service tonight because of Father's Day, but this week, starting on Tuesday, is district camp meeting, and it'll go till Sunday. If you are interested in what those schedules look like, there is a beautiful blue sheet of paper um, that will give you all the details of what they're doing at the district level. They will be at uh, 7 o'clock on the weekdays and then 6 o'clock on the weekends. Um, Our groups, uh, youth and senior adults, will be going down for some Ivanhoe's, um, but we just really encourage you to go and be a part of those services. J.K. Wark uh, is a great speaker, uh, one of our previous general superintendents, and he will be there. And so just 
go and support and be a part. And you can see what day works best in your schedule by looking at that um, that sheet, and you can you can make it work for yourself. So uh, we'd love to see you down there. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, you have been so generous to us, and may we be generous in return. Lord, we just say thank you for uh, all that you're doing and how the offering and the funds that you provide um, are doing so many great things in the ministries in our church. Um, We hear about them often, and and Lord, um, we just ask that on top of just the offerings and giving, Lord, that you would rise up uh, harvest workers, Lord, to work in these ministries as well. We say thank you, and we give you praise in your name. Amen. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battles won. You have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Oh. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Oh. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I see you do it again. You make Faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. 
This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Good morning, good morning. Yes. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness. He really, truly, truly has never failed. Amen. Amen. Yes. Just, just a second. Let's, let's get a mic, because I can't, I, I can't hear you. I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet that's what Jerry tells you to. <laughs> that's called selective hearing. That's, that's what he says. <laughs> uh, but um, last uh, Sunday evening when we got home from church, uh, Jerry said, I want to share something uh, with you. And he said, I'll try and get through it. And he told me, and I said, um, he said, I was going to share it at uh, Sunday evening service, but... Uh, Andrew had asked for, uh, you know, uh, prayer requests. And I said, well, I said, that doesn't make any difference. I said, you know, uh, you should have uh, shared uh, what had happened. But um, it really uh, touched my heart. And, um, you know, not all the fathers here today have all their children with them. There are some that sons and daughters of gone home to Jesus. But uh, I'd really uh, like Jerry to share this today because by it being Father's Day, I feel like it's uh, very appropriate. Are you mad? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we come about doing this. I think we were out to the cemetery one day and a cardinal flew up and lost made the comment that uh, Jill's checking on us through nature. Well, we went to the race on the 8th, and uh, Jill loved racing. And gone with Mike and her dad. And I had thought of that all day. You know, as we was gone, we had a good time, but when the uh, time got still, I thought of Jill. And last Sunday morning when I got up, I was sitting there doing my devotions, and uh, I was thinking of Jill. And I looked out the sunroom window, and this red cardinal flew up to the window and looked at me. I mean, just sat there and fluttered and looked at me. And then flew around and landed on top of her evergreen tree and sat there and looked at me, turned its head sideways and looked at me. And I just thought how God uses his creation to bless us. Hmm. And I just want to thank him today for that and being our Heavenly Father. And when we accept and being born again that we're heirs of His Amen. and heirs with Jesus Christ, co-heirs. Amen. Amen. Somebody's not driving your car very well. Uh, 
they, they're abusing it. And I said, oh, no, he wouldn't do that. He said, then why is there mud and straw up behind your bumper? But fathers sometimes can see things that mothers don't because we're so kind and loving. But I appreciate fathers, <laughs> and I'll tell you today, we need to appreciate men in this country and our fathers. And we should have great respect for them, and our children should, because if they don't learn to respect their earthly father, they will not respect their heavenly father. That's right. That and wives right. and husbands need to stand together on decisions. That's right. That's a very good point, Brenda. I, I, I'm just telling you, if we do not learn to respect the fathers of this earth, we will not teach our kids to respect the heavenly father. That is so true. So, so true. That's why God gave us a father. Someone else? I mean, I mean, if there's no one else, you're going to have to listen to me. So who wants to be the first to jump up? All right, open your Bibles to Joshua, chapter 24. Joshua, chapter 24. And... Let's stand for the reading of God's word this morning. Can we do that? Now fear the Lord and serve him with faithfulness. I could stop right there, couldn't I? Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Are you hearing a ring theme there? Serve. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it for us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our fathers up out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed these great signs before our eyes. He protects us on our entire journey among all the nations through which they traveled. we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We, too, will serve the Lord because he is our God. Amen? I like this morning, uh, Dennis Bainey, could I get you to pray for the message in the messenger? Amen. You may be seated. Does anybody know how Father's Day actually got started? I, I thought it was interesting. I did a little research and discovered that the very first Father's Day was in 1909. It was during a Mother's Day service at a church. And there was a lady by the name of Sonora Smart Dodd, who felt compelled to celebrate her father. And the reason why she felt compelled is because she had lost her mother, and because of that, her dad stepped up and became the role model for her. He literally uh, sacrificed for her. He, he was selfless. He was gentle. He loved on her. He disciplined her. And so... In June of 1909, Sonora had a Father's Day at a church because that was the day or the month that her father's birthday was on. It's interesting, in 1929, President Calvige Cooley proclaimed the third Sunday in June to be Father's Day. And here's a little, another bit of information. Did you know the rose is the Father's Day flower? And if you actually put on a red flower on that day, 
it meant your father was still living. But if you put on a white flower, it means your father had passed on. Isn't it amazing how traditions start? A good father is one of the, the most unsung, unnoticed, underpraised, and underprivileged or appreciated unsung heroes of our day. A little boy was asked one day um, what if she, he could define Father's Day, and his words was this. It's just like Mother's Day, only you don't have to spend as much on the present. Some of Dad's favorite sayings. Go ask your mother. Just wait till I get home. When I was your age, and the last one's, I'm busy right now. We could go to many places in the Bible and look at different fathers. I actually, when I got up this morning, I was thinking about Noah. We could talk about Noah, but today I want us to take a look at the man Joshua. And it's interesting, in this passage of Scripture of Joshua, he, he's at the age of 110 years old. He summoned all the leaders of the Israel tribe to come together to Shechem to give his farewell address, which I read this morning, his farewell address at Shechem. Now, it's interesting that it was at Shechem because Shechem was a historical place. It was very appropriate. It was a very sacred place of memories. It's where uh, Abraham uh, had Isaac on the altar. It's about Jacob's well. There's other things that took place. And as Joshua spoke, he was wanting to warn them of the dangers of forsaking God. He says in Joshua 24, verse 15, A, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. And then he reinforced it by appealing with the power of a good example. Remind you, he had been with Moses for 40 years, wandering in the desert, and then he led the tribe of Israel for 25 years. So 65 years later, he's trying to get them to understand, and he says in the second part of that verse, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I mean, there's a lot of things we could say about Joshua, but there's a couple of qualities I, I, I just want us to pinpoint today. And the first one is priest of the home. As priest of home, of the home, a godly father is acknowledged their responsibilities for the spiritual life of their family. That's what it needs to be all about, fathers. It's about your families. It's recognizing that you have a responsibility to do everything within your power to be the priest of the home so that your kids see an example of Christ in your life. A priest cannot function unless he is close in contact with God. He just can't. In other words, as a priest... You have to be staying in the Word and listening to God and listening to what He has to say and doing what He says what you're supposed to do. And that's not always easy in a family situation. I remember one time um, I, I felt very called to a place. And no one in the family wanted to go. And I said, this is where the Lord says we are to go. And we went. And I'll, I'll just tell you what, it was, it was an incredible journey. They understood that their dad listens to what the Spirit of God says, even when it's not comfortable. And it's the father's duty to make sure his children know how to be saved and how to walk in the ways of the Lord. And so we need to be teaching them as they grow. And now that I'm a grandfather... It's my responsibility to also teach our grandkids in the way of the Lord. There's no getting around it. Those kids, whether it be our children or our grandchildren, need to see that we love God with everything. See, the greatest thing a father can pass on to his children is the love of God. And they can only see it sometimes through the father. 
Joshua urges Israel to make love of God their special aim when he says this in Joshua 23, 11. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. There's one night a little boy was very frightened. There was a horrible storm and thunderstorm and lightning and the wind was blowing. I think we kind of understand what that's been like this, this spring, haven't we? And the little boy cried out to his father. He says, Daddy, I'm scared. And the father said, Son, God loves you and he'll take care of you. You're all right. And the little boy replied back, I know God loves me. But right now, I need somebody who has skin on. And that's exactly what our children need to see in their father. God with skin on. I mean, Joshua was a warrior, but he was also a man of peace. He, he wanted his children to see his love for the father. And if we would give love, we must first receive the love from the Father so we have to stay in contact with Him so that our responsibility as we give and pass on that love, they will see the Father's love in us. We just kind of learn to bask in the presence of God and absorb it, to give it. Second, as priest of the home, a godly father is to remember your children are watching you and will follow you So daily serve God wholeheartedly. I was putting that point down. I know it's kind of a long point, but our kids remember a lot of things that we do. I just signed a letter to my dad this week and sent a card out to him. And I remember one of the things my dad did was uh, he drove for a Jewel T truck. Anybody remember Jewel T? You remember how they would go different doors? Did anybody have a, were you a Jewel T customer? You guys were? I wonder if my brother maybe served you guys because he did that in the summer for a college job. Um, but one of the things I got to thinking about, I always thought I didn't do a lot with my dad, but I, I realized I did a ton of things with my dad. It was just my dad was doing other things as I was with him. Like, for an example, I can tell you what the looks of a lot of gymnasiums in Fort Wayne looks like because my dad was refereeing so much, and I would just go with him. Mom was working, and, and I would go, and my babysitting was my dad refereeing maybe an industrial game at the old New Haven High School, and I'd go over there and play in the forts around that I, I would create or whatever. Um, one of the things about being in Jewel Team, my dad would drive all over Fort Wayne, all over the countryside. And so my kids will say to me, Dad, how do you know to get, how to get around Fort Wayne so well? <laughs> I pinpoint it back to my dad. It was an example he set. Now this is video maybe a little blurry. But as a six-year-old, this video really hit me hard. And as I was preparing this, I thought to myself, this would be a great video if I could find it. So I got on YouTube, which I think you can find about anything on YouTube. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's basically like father, like son, except in some ways we need to pay attention to what he's saying about following dad's example. So Nelson, if you'll play it. Like father, like son. <laughs> When was the last time you saw a kid in the front seat? Remember that commercial? That made a big impression on me. I'm glad my dad didn't smoke. I'm glad my dad didn't do a lot of things. He taught me to follow the way of the Lord. There's top ten ways to fail as a parent. 
Let me give you the top ten. First, number ten is let your children make their own choice in the matters of religion. You know, today, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of people who say, I will not force my kids to go to church. But you force them to school. You force them to other things. I've heard kids say, I don't want to go play ball anymore because I am so sick of, of my dad forcing me to go play basketball. Yet, when it comes to faith, you're not willing to give them what's most important. You'll fail. Number nine, absolutely refuse to believe it if you're, you are told that your children have done something wrong. Boy, that, that's a common one today. <laughs> Go check our school corporation. The kids never do anything wrong. Um, I hate to say this, but yeah, they do. Um, my mom knew, and I knew, that uh, the consequences, if I did something wrong at school... I was telling someone the other day, I got pulled into the principal's office one time, and uh, I was running with the wrong kids, which that's going to be something here in a minute. I was running with the wrong kids, and, and they did something. And I was like maybe fifth, sixth grade, never been put in a, in a principal's office. The first kid goes in. I heard them talking. All of a sudden, I heard. And I thought, oh, no, the paddle just came out. I'm in trouble because my mom and dad said if, if I got a paddle at school, I got twice as many when I got home. Anybody remember those sayings? All of a sudden, the next kid went in. And sure enough, again, there was some talk, and then all of a sudden, and now I'm sweating bullets because my dad hits hard. Third one came. I heard, and I thought, oh, man, it's my turn. And I walked in, and the principal, Mr. Ness, isn't that funny? I can even remember his name. I can't remember names, but I remember that name this morning. Mr. Ness sat me down. He said, Tim, you know what you did was wrong? I said, yeah. He goes, you know, part of the problem is you're with the wrong kids. They're going to get you in trouble. Did you know that? Yeah. Well, I also know that if I give you a a spanking today, uh, you're going to get twice as many when you get home. Did you know that? Yeah. How you feel about getting a spanking? I don't want one. He goes, that's why you're the last one in the office today. You're not getting one. I wanted you to sweat it out. You've had your punishment. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Number eight. Set a bad example so that kids, your children will not want to grow up to be like you. Number seven. If you want to fail as a parent, never discuss the facts of life with them. Let them discover the sexual life at school on the Internet. Number six, demonstrate your love for them with material things. And I saw this all the time as a youth pastor. Parents didn't want to be with their kids, and they would just hand them a credit card, go do this or go do that. They just gave them what they wanted whenever they wanted. And, and they were spoiled rotten. that they, they didn't know what it meant to be, say no to. Well, one of these days, they're going to have a rude awakening. They're going to have a hu- huge rude awakening when an employer says, no, you can't do this. And they're going to say, yes, I, I'm going to. And then, you know, you, you would be fired. And then they won't understand. You've got to get to a point where you demonstrate your love for them, not with material things, just to get rid of them. Number five, nag them about their schoolwork. How about let's just encourage them with some compliments of the achievements they've had. I've seen parents who, who run the schoolwork to the ground to the point that, that uh, it's all about the schoolwork. How about even their relationship with Jesus Christ? You're more concerned about the schoolwork than that, than your relationship. Number five, or four, sorry. Never discipline your children. Try to use psychology instead, uh, psychologically Speaking, people are trying to to do things and not discipline their kids. Let me tell you, discipline is okay. Parents, it's okay to discipline your child. Don't beat them, but it's okay to discipline them. It might mean you have to take some things away. It's okay. You are their parent, not their friend. Eventually, you will become their friend because you were their parent. And they will love you for that in the end, which I have discovered with my parents. 
Number three, take no interest in your children's friends. That's really important. Who, who are your kids running with? Nine chances out of ten, if they're running with the wrong person, they're going to do the wrong things. Know who those kids are. And you know, I just really encourage you, um, have them in your home. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things we've always done is open our house so that our kids were always coming to our house and wanting to be at our house that, that maybe those kids would come and see what a Christ-like home looked like. And maybe they would change. Number two, stifle your, kid, your child's questions by saying, don't bother me now, I'm busy. And I'm guilty at that one. I, I have to be real truthful. I was not good at that. I had a, a, a wife who was very good at stopping what she was doing to listen. And then number one, number one way to fail have fights with your spouse in front of your children. I can't overemphasize. If you want your children to fail, just let them watch you fight. It's better to take it to the side room and talk about it and try to work it through and, and, and let them see you hugging and loving on, on your kids. You know, one of the greatest compliments Monica and I ever got, and this is not the pass on the back, please understand, but people are watching what you do. I want you to understand, but in Brownstown, Monica and I would go for walks, and we'd hold hands and put our arms around each other, and Andrew and Bethany would go to school, and they would say, we saw your mom and dad holding hands. Uh, I sometimes felt like they were embarrassed by that. Well, good. That's what parents are supposed to do, embarrass our kids, right? I read a very humbling story about a pastor who had a child who was very ill, the boy went in and he took tests and he went under go many procedures. And in the test, when they came back, they told the father that their son was terminally ill. The youngster had accepted Jesus Christ into his life as Savior and Lord. And so he knew, the pastor knew that his son would go to see Jesus in glory. But he wondered, how do I break this news to my child? How do I break this news that their life is going to be coming to an end? How do I do that? And he started to talk to the Holy Spirit to find out how could he do that and what was the best way. And, and so one day he went and he sat down with the child and he read a few passages of Scripture and they had prayer together. And then he gently told his, him what the doctor told him, that he only had a few more days to live. Then he said to his son, Son, are you afraid to go meet Jesus? And the son, with tears coming out of his eyes, but trying to wipe them away, said, No, not if he's like you, Dad. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing for our kids, that they see Christ in us. Third, as priest of the home, the godly father is to be a man of prayer. He goes to God often on behalf of his family, asking for wisdom asking for the courage to be able to raise their child in the way and, and their wife in the way or their spouse in the way they should go in the Lord. I mean, Joshua gives a very good example of this. In, or I shouldn't say Joshua. Job does a very good job of this in Job chapter 1 when he says, early in the morning he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was... Uh, Job's regular custom. See, praying is very important because it's about the connection with the Heavenly Father that you're developing. So not just being a priest of the home, but another thing that's really important is the plan for your family. See, it's not enough just to be the priest of your home. The godly father must also plan for the spiritual life of their loved ones. Matter of fact, Joshua said it like this when he said, we will serve the Lord. It didn't say, I will serve the Lord, and my, father, or my kids can do whatever they want. It says, we will serve the Lord. So planning for the family means we strive to help bring unity God intended for the family. It's about the unity that we bring when we connect with the Father and do what he says to do. When Joshua spoke, his voice rang out with the sound of unity. Did you catch it in 2415b? But as, or, as for me and my household, it should be A, um, 
as for me and my household. It's, it's a togetherness. It's, it's about being together. It's the example. And it's interesting because, because of his character, because of his example, his authenticity with his relationship with God, his being genuine, the family could trust what he said. And so they would do what the family said. And so whenever dad said something, they would just do it. That's plan. That's striving for unity, togetherness. But planning for the family means we will endure through the trials of life together as one. Joshua pressed a godly determination to preserve his family, even if it meant he was all by himself. He was prepared to stand alone with his family if necessary. He, he was willing to. I mean, stop and think for a moment. The first time he had to stand... He was one of the spies, the 12 spies that went in, into Canaan. And when he came back, 10 of the spies were so negative that they ran negative things through their congregation, their group. That, but Joshua says, no, we are to go and take the land. God's given it to us. Let's go do it now. But because they didn't listen, he was the minority. And he had to suffer for what those ten that had negative thoughts were able to influence the people, he had to wander in the, in the desert. But he was willing to stand that God said he would see Canaan. He would see the promised land. So sometimes it might mean we have to be all alone. And after 65 years, he, or six, 40 years, he got to go in and see the promised land. Planning for the family means we are to have a godly determination that must extend into the devotional life of the family. I mean, it's about a spiritual safety that that the kids know they can come in and freely talk about what's going on in their spiritual lives. It's about praying for them and praying over them and and being with them and saying, hey, let's, let's pray, take this to the Lord in prayer. It's about being able to discuss those spiritual issues that sometimes are difficult. It's, it's about being able to sing praises and hymns to the Heavenly Father while, while you're going on va- family vacations or just driving down the road. In the book, In His Steps, Charles Sheldon wrote, he gives this testimony. In a log house on the prairie, My father taught me to love the Bible. After breakfast every morning, the family would have a devotional time in the parlor. Each of us had a Bible of his own. Father would read two verses out loud from the chapter of the day. Then mother would read two verses, and each of us would read two verses. Before five years were over, we read the entire Bible five times. I think I was the only man alive who has heard the whole Bible read five times. We never skipped a verse, not even the long list of the wordies who begat one another. The minute we had finished Revelations, Father calmly turned back to Genesis, and we went at it again. I wanted to repeat that my father taught me to love the Bible as the greatest book in the world. After we had read the Bible passage for the day. We would sing a hymn. We would all kneel down while Father offered the morning prayer. We were Scottish-Irish, and naturally Father's prayers as long, praise as long as he liked. And we'd often pray for us by name. And when I left the home to go down to the east to college, I would often be tempted to do what some of the college boys did, swear, gamble, go to the board, bar, etc. Just as I was about to give my, my way to my desires, give way to my desires, I heard my father's morning prayer in the log cabin. And it, it was enough to keep me from falling away from God. See, the example, the planning, doing what God called him to do kept him from the scars of life that could have happened. Fathers, are you praying for your kids daily? Are you praying for your grandkids daily? When you get with them, do you talk about spiritual things? Do you, do you talk to them about 
what God's been talking to you about in the Bible and the Scriptures? See, that's our responsibility as a parent. And as Joshua would say, he's going to serve the Lord. And he did it by showing them an example of fatherhood at its highest. Joshua serves as an example of fatherhood at its highest. A call all Christian fathers to be a priesthood of their home. To have a place to cultivate the spiritual life of your family that they will serve the Lord wholeheartedly with everything they do. Amen? This morning I would like for all the fathers to to please stand at this time. We want to pray for you specifically. Would you just stand? All right, now, this is going to be a good one. We're going to need some help maybe with some of you. Um, I'd like for you to gather around. Let's just do it now. Yeah, let's do it like I was going to do it originally. Let's the rest of you stand and go to the fathers. And if you don't have a father here today, be looking for someone who does not have a father. And go to them and just lay your hands on them as we close in prayer for our fathers. Would you do that this time? I'm going to do this. Fathers, if, if you don't have someone around you, will you raise your hand way up high so I can see? I want to make sure all the fathers have someone around them. I see uh, at least two or three over this direction. Judy, can I get you? I see some fathers over here. Can I get you to go that direction? Judy. Judy, Judy, Judy. Judy. Can can I get you can I get you to go with this direction for huh? Oh, Kyle has somebody. Can I get you to come over here? Because we got some fathers over here yet that don't have anybody. Sarah, can I get you? Can I get you to come over? Bill Halsey doesn't have anybody. By the way, Bill, this week I talked to a young man. Well, he's not young. He's younger than me. But he, he's told me he, he's promised you to be at church, and he's going to try to. He's my new neighbor. And uh, so I just want to let you know, don't be shocked and fall over uh, if he shows up one day. We've got another, uh, another father over here. Do, do, is there anybody else? Is there any other fathers? Thank you, Rhonda, for covering over there. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you for this day, and I do want to thank you for our fathers. Man, our, they are so special to us, Lord. They're the men of the house. You, you raised man first, Lord, not to be of higher position, but to be the spiritual leaders of the home. And I thank you this morning that uh, we are in a situation here that, Lord, uh, you've given us some great examples in your word that we can live by. May we look at Noah, Lord, who who literally was able to um, raise up the children in a way of the Lord that they were saved in the ark. They built that boat. It took them like 100 years. And they all worked together, Lord. It was a unifying thing in you. But it saved them from death of this earth. Pray that, Lord, you help us to intensify our love relationship with you. That, Lord, we would have such a hunger and a passion for you that nothing else would matter. This morning, I, I, I kind of put some people over with the gentleman over here, and I know their spouses are great. I just want to make sure we're surrounded by a whole family. And this morning, we just pray that, Lord, if there's some people that feel like they're, they're lonely and left out, and I have to be real truthful, we live in a world that's very lonely, and when our loved one passes on and moves on, it can be very difficult. We encourage their hearts today. May they, may they just sense your peace every day. Think of my dad who, who's lonely. I know others are lonely. But the great news, they don't have to be lonely, Lord, when you're there. 
But Lord, sometimes they just need someone with skin on them. Help us to look for your wisdom. Help us to look for your guiding hand in decisions that have to be made. And may we not fail as a father, but may the kids see you through us in everything that we do. We pray this in your name. Amen. Just want to remind you tonight that there is no service. There's no service Wednesday night here because of the camp meeting. And so we'll see you next Sunday morning, all right? God bless. This might hurt, it's not safe, but I know that I've